to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. We are bringing you the quarantine content that you need. That you I'm deserve. your host, and you deserve. You are right. I'm your host, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman. Right, joined by my best friend, who is not near me. He is very far away from me. Jason Moore, what's up, dude? Uh, well, you know, to be fair, we're like a mile and a half apart. I mean, you know, that's, well, that's in, not in terms as of long recording. distance relationships go. I feel like we're still we're still very close. I can't talk to you through a tin can tied to a with a string. That like, is like we fair. can't pull that move. That's but, that's fair. And and you know I don't know maybe world record for another <laughs> video. Maybe we get this done. Longest tin can string challenge. Has anybody yeah. done this? Uh, someone's about to. It's gonna it's gonna light the internet on fire. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Hey, maybe we'll do it. People are going to be getting bored these days, but we're here to try and help keep you entertained. Fantasy football, it's happening. Well, sort of. The news is coming in. It's hot and heavy. It is free agency. Last show, something pretty awesome happened. I just want to remind everybody. Oh, 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 oh. I remember... The Did Arizona you know? Cardinals got DeAndre Hopkins for the Jack the Squad. Damn, DeAndre Hopkins. All right, but back to serious business. So someone else acquired a superstar wide receiver. The Buffalo Bills, they traded for Stephon Diggs. Now, did they trade or, or did the, the, the Vikings get like a, you know, just a low pick or something? No. They opened up the vault. The Buffalo Bills sent over Stephon or acquired Stephon Diggs for a first, a fifth, a sixth, and a next year's fourth. Yeah, one, a four, five, crap. and six compared Holy. to DeAndre Hopkins two right. and a bad contract. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This, that was good times. Uh but yes, th- th- this is huge news because the Bills, if you remember. Not everybody out there will have been around for the specific day where Antonio Brown was a Buffalo Bill. I had when, forgotten about it. I mean, there, there was one day where it was reported, it was done, it was traded. He was going from the Steelers to uh, the Bills, and then that fell apart. But it did show that the Bills were serious inquirers to get Josh Allen a legitimate one. Uh, you know, they go out and they get John Brown last year and, uh, you know, much has been made about the, the height of their wide receivers, which I believe averaged before this trade five foot two, they were very short wide receivers. Wait, what? <laughs> Don't look that up. Don't <laughs> fact check anything here. Uh, that might be hyperbole, but the, the, the point remains that they, they didn't really have a true one and they knew they needed to get one and now they have one. So we're here to break down the fantasy implications. That And that is the quick question of the day. What's the fantasy impact from the Stefan Diggs trade? You have a lot of angles to look at it. You have Stefan Diggs himself. You have Josh Allen. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Josh Stallion. Then you have John Brown on that team on over in Buffalo. Then you have Adam Thielen back in Minnesota, left by his lonesome currently with Kirk Cousins. Jay, what I have some numbers that you may find shocking. Oh. You uh, actually you won't. You'll just oh. hear them and go, "Oh yeah, I already knew that." But what's your initial takeaway for for these guys? Well, there there's a lot of takeaways. I mean, I think the ancillary pieces are easiest to deal with. Like John Brown, who was actually pretty consistent last year. He wasn't a superstar, but week in, week out, you could rely on him is dead to me. John Brown is worthless now because this is still, I know they just paid up to get a wide receiver and they've got a young cannon quarterback, but this is still a run first team, a defensive minded run first team. That's how they want to play. And so if you're telling me that Stefan Diggs comes in, takes the largest market share, I don't want, I'm fine with the second wide receiver on a team for fantasy, 
when it's a high-flying, high-scoring team, oftentimes, we've seen historically, there's usually anywhere from three to five teams every year that have two, multiple uh, wide receivers on their team that finish in fantasy, either in the top 12 or the top 24, and this isn't going to be one of those teams. So John Brown, I loved him, loved him as an Arizona Cardinal. Smoke, you're great. He will have his big games, but he won't be on my fantasy roster in any way, shape, or form because I think the consistency will be gone. But the consistency that he did show this last year, I think that that's that builds the confidence. You might not love Josh Stallion um, as far as accuracy, as far as fantasy production for wide receivers. I see you grimacing already, Mike, and, and I get it. Yes. But what John Brown's cons consistency already proved is that a year older Josh Allen will be able to sustain Stephon Diggs. I'm in on Stephon Diggs. I believe he right. will have. I, I believe he will be a a top fifteen wide receiver pretty easily. So I mean, I you know I'm okay. I'm, I'm now, bullish. I mean, you're, you're also completely looking off that Cole Beasley was there, and Cole Beasley had over a twenty one percent market share. Like like I said, five foot two average wide receiver. But the the Cole Beasley targets aren't just going to vanish. It's not now just John Brown and Stephon Diggs. It's now the three of them. So you think that the market share won't be there for Diggs within the offense? I think that he will have the highest market share in that offense, but it's. There's not enough to go around for three guys. I, I agree, and, and that's why I think those other guys are dead to me because I and, do and that, think Diggs comes in and and you know gets up near a 30% market share. He's too squeaky, no, man. He's, no way. Stephon Diggs is not getting a 30% target share. Over. I say he's north of 25%. I would probably take that bet. But So here's the numbers I wanted to bring up because you mentioned the accuracy for Josh Allen. You can't talk about him without – highlighting those things so here's just some numbers about overall accuracy last year josh allen 461 attempts completed 58.8 percent of his passes kirk cousins 444 attempts completed 69.1 percent of his passes nice that's it is that's very nice uh i mean that's a that's an 11 point event near 11 point advantage over josh allen since 2015 as a starter, when Kirk Cousins became a starter, he is the third most accurate quarterback in the NFL. Since Josh Allen or since Josh Allen has been in the NFL, there is one passer with a lower completion percentage than him. That was Josh Rosen. Mm. So th that's what we're, we're talking about for accuracy. Okay, so let's look at deep passing. Josh Allen went deep on 14.6% of his uh, attempts. He had an adjust, adjusted completion percentage, so actual catchable passes when he goes deep, and deep is 20-plus uh, air yards. Adjusted completion percentage of 28.4. So just <laughs> just over 25% of his man. passes He's were catchable. Really, that's so good. Meanwhile, Kirk Cousins, he went deep on 13.7, so like very close in terms of uh, how often Kirk Cousins was going deep. Cousins adjusted completion percentage, 47.8. I mean, th this is a drastic difference when someone is going deep. And my point of saying all this is Stefan Diggs was uh, a bit of a malcontent. I guess you could put it lightly. Oh, I mean, certainly. I mean, He's the like, squeakiest wheel in the league now that Antonio Brown is out. He w was vague booking every other day, sending out cryptic messages on his social media. And it's, okay, Stefan, here's what you get now, man. You're going to Buffalo with with this this quarterback. Yeah, he can throw the ball a mile, but you've been playing with one of the most accurate quarterbacks in football since he became a starter. So I just I am concerned for Stephon Diggs. And when you add add in the accuracy problems, add in the fact that Cole Beasley is not going away, and John John Brown and Cole Beasley will still be involved. Josh Allen's pass attempts, I can't see them going up drastically from 461. Like maybe he, maybe he gets to 480. I don't, where where do you think his passing attempts will land next year? 
No, I I, I think he will be in that uh, four ninety range. I, he'll he'll be sub five hundred. That's what the team wants to do. So you know you you add that with the uh you know completion percentage, and you say, well, man, he's going to need to do a lot. But I actually think that there is an already existing comp that is fair, that's actually legitimate and makes a lot of sense. Where's McDermott from? Carolina. Who is his quarterback? Cam Newton. Who is the person who is most comped to to Josh Allen? It's Cam Newton. He's that big style, big bodied, poor accuracy, but a great running quarterback. Mobile, picks up first downs, keeps the chains moving, good for the offense with a low total passing attempt number. And if you look back when he had Steve Smith, when he had Steve Smith, you know who you, I think it's fair to say Stephon Diggs is in that tier of wide receiver. Not to say he's, you know, already, you know, Steve Smith to me is a Hall it's, of Famer. It's a fine, it's it's a fine thing to to compare those two. But when he had Steve Smith, he had Steve Smith. It, like, and, the, and my point is that John Brown is a really good football player. Cole Beasley is also a very good football player. He Beasley won't be fantasy relevant, but he will he will take enough away that Stephon Diggs. I don't I don't know if I'll have him in my top fifteen come rankings. Sure, I mean, maybe he won't, uh, but, you know, I mean, you, you saw Cam's rookie year. Steve Smith had, what, 1,407? Um, so I uh, my point is, I believe, uh, look, John Brown and Cole Beasley, they were fine this year. They were the 1A and 1B or the 3A and 3B with no 1 and 2 on that roster. But I think at the end of next year, you'll look back and say, well, yeah, but it was Stephon Diggs and nobody. Sorry, I know everybody's got you've got the Beasles, but uh, I you know Diggs is a special talent, um, and they, they, he better be he better be. They paid out the <laughs> nose. Here's the thing, well they did. I was gonna say, did they really pay out the nose, or did the yes. Hopkins trade just no. make it look no. like they, they paid? Yeah, they did. I mean, a they, one, a four, five, and six. That's basically saying I'm gonna keep my two and three and seven and trade the rest of my draft class. That's that's a lot of money. All right, so okay, so we've we've dug into digs. Boom, did it. Um, John Brown. <laughs> nice. I think we can both agree that John Brown and Cole Beasley are not going to be relevant fantasy options next year. I would agree. Yes. Okay. So now the the last question, or I guess there's two. One, what does this do for Josh Allen? And also, Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen is now left as the last man standing, and. To me, he has shown on the field that he can be a one. He's a good enough route runner. Um, he's I, I I think he's a great wide receiver. So sometimes when the counterpart on the other side of the field leaves, it can hurt you. I don't think this is the case. In a low-volume offense as well in Minnesota, I think Thielen is going to be an excellent draft pick this year, assuming he could stay on the field. And that's, that's sure. a worthy question is his injury history. And he won't be alone. Like The Vikings just picked up another first round pick. Uh, there's there's still free agent wide receivers who are out there. Robbie Anderson is still out there as of this recording. So it's it, they aren't going into next year with the wide receiver core that's on the team. This right was now. such a good trade for the Vikings and I I think not everyone will agree I with agree. that because No, I I agree. He didn't want to be there. It, he didn't want to be there and this is a team that doesn't pass the ball as much as you know, you know, like, do they really need, are they capitalizing on having Thielen and Diggs? Not really. And they have, were a cap-strapped team that really needed, I mean, they, they've they been very good, so you don't think of them as a rebuild, but roster-wise, like, they needed some more pieces. Now they go and get four more picks and free up cap space. I, I think this was really good for them. So what what do you think about Thielen's outlook? I'm, I'll still be bullish on Thielen. I, I, I want to see who else is on the field. I mean, we... It's it's at least similar. You can you can fairly say last year Juju was going to be all alone. We've thought Ju and coming into last year, everyone was very hyped for Juju. He's a great wide receiver. But what happens when he's alone? What happens when there's not another alpha on the field? What happens? I think that Thielen will be fine. The but I want to see who else they put on the field to to know if I can buy into Thielen really being. Uh, like a top end wide receiver one, kind of like how he has been when he's uh, when he was actually on on the field last last year was uh, was pretty rough. If you want to follow along with the show, if you want to check out what we are doing 
on the YouTubes oh. because look, we're not in the same place. No, you got to check it out. We've got new setups. Yeah, you, you want to see my room? You want to see where I work when I'm at home? YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You want to see Jason's fancy shutters? <laughs> Mike, YouTube. you have a much cooler recording space in your home. I think we can all agree with that. You've got like the guitars hanging up behind you, the the Foot Clan and, and fantasy footballer swag all around. You're looking awesome. I'm like, welcome to my fancy <laughs> pants home that I am right next to shutters. And I will say this, uh, it, along the way, so like the podcast is obviously here because you're listening to it right now. We're going to be trying to to uh, help bring some entertainment, help bring uh, some levity to these serious times with some live streams, ways to engage with people more. And one of those things is I am working with our producers. I'm going to live stream working on drops. People have asked me, the entire time that the show was going on, how do you make how do you make the drops, the transition music for for the footballers podcast? And I'm gonna I'll just show people. That's gonna be so so cool. I think people are gonna love that. Do you want me to be there for the? Because I do the voices. I do the yes. You do the voiceover. <laughs> Welcome to the fantasy football. So I do that. Yes. And I think people might want. People ask all the time who does. Who does the voice of the drops, and and they might want to see me do that magic on on video. So just let me know, hit me up, and I you know I'll yes. be like, it's time for the mailbag. <laughs> it's, it's not even what the drop says. I, I couldn't think of one. <laughs> I literally was like, oh man, what's what's a drop where it just says mailbag? Where, where I I know, but he does he say mailbag or do you? Yes. No, you sing mailbag. He's. <laughs> The drop says mailbag. Well, when you say he, you mean me. Yes, I mean, of course I mean you. Mailbag. So make sure you're following us over on YouTube, or you can follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. You, of course, have noticed that Andy is not here. He's he's getting tested. We're trying to figure out what is going on exactly with him. So we are still w wishing well for Andy to make his speedy recovery. Hopefully we can get him on the the show next week jason are you ready to get into this free agent frenzy let's do it free agent frenzy all right so we already knew what was going to happen but the saints have re-signed drew Brees. that's kind of a just a formality at this point we already knew it was going to happen ho hum status quo let's get into the big stuff Tom freaking <laughs> Brady has left the New England Patriots. I was steadfast in my belief that it was a near impossibility that Tom Brady would actually leave the team. The egg is on my face. He goes to the Bucks. There are major, major, major fantasy implications from the team transitioning from Jameis Winston YOLO, throw the ball deep all the time, turn the ball over a bunch to Tom Brady. Jason, what's your initial reaction? Yeah, I mean, I as so this is just crazy news. And, and I don't know what's going to be weirder. I genuinely don't. Watching Tom Brady as a Buccaneer or watching the Patriots without Tom Brady. With whoever, and we have no idea who it's going to be yet. Yeah, so uh, fantasy implications here, I don't think they're going to push the ball as much. Vegas kind of has the line at about 4,500 passing yards, uh, and I believe 32 passing touchdowns right now for Tom Brady. I think those are fair numbers. He's not going to be up near the 5,000 that Jameis was at. Jameis had to throw for 5,000 to get back in some of these games, but fair. it does make sense. They had several games this year where they lost by – you know, a one score game. And in those games that, that was that they finished one score behind or less or fewer, I believe Jameis had 18 of his interceptions in those games. So Tom Brady, I think does make them, I mean, I, so this is uh, something can't confirm here other than Mike saying so, but prior to the signing can't of confirm. Tom Brady, I was saying, I believe the Buccaneers are a playoff team this year. So Tom Brady, uh, I don't know that he brings them to the level of contender, but they're going to be in the running. I think they're going to win more games than not from a fantasy standpoint. Yeah, that, that's what people care about, Jason. We don't care if the Bucks are going to make the yeah, playoffs. Get out of here. I love Jameis Winston for fantasy. Don't care that he sucks. Um, 
but uh, I think, and and th- maybe this is maybe this is foolish of me. Uh, you tell me if it is or not. But I actually think that some of the rumors about Tom Brady wanting the Buccaneers to sign Antonio Brown, oh, gross, might have legs to it. And it, if that happens, then every opinion we share here changes. You know, Chris Godwin to me is phenomenal here. Uh, I would much rather have Chris Godwin than Mike Evans at this point because the slot wide receiver, the guy that's going to go across the middle, catch the timing routes from Tom Brady, the, he's he's going to do great. Whereas Mike Evans, the deep field stretcher, um, you brought it up uh, when we were talking about the possibility of this. And I believe you're right that, look, Brady didn't have a weapon like Mike Evans, and he will utilize him. I don't think Mike Evans dies or falls off a cliff here. But if you just look at where he throws more often, Chris Godwin is clearly the fantasy option I want to have. And as a dynasty owner of Chris Godwin, I- I'm pretty happy. So long, pretty as, happy yeah. so long as AB doesn't come to town, I-, I think Chris Godwin is going to repeat what he did last year despite fewer uh, y- offensive yardage and touchdowns as a whole for the Buccaneers. Now, last year, Jameis Winston essentially threw deep uh, he- at the fourth highest rate of if starting quarterbacks Tom Brady was down at about 26th and completion percentage Jameis was in fact better than Tom Brady was this completely related to the weapons around Tom Brady I'm not sure my biggest question as I was trying to look around and you know like what marks could could I use to get an edge here to gain a different perspective uh on this and it's Tom Brady was really bad under pressure. We all know this. The the secret to beating Tom Brady is you hit him. And once he starts getting hit, bad things start to happen. He had a 36 completion, 36 points. That that was his completion percentage when he was under pressure. Worst. The worst for all starters. 36%? Yes. Wow. When when he was under pressure last year, he was absolute trash. Now, that is really not good. Yeah, this, that's in fact four points lower than the, the second worst uh, per percentage for being under pressure. And then it's the bigger question then is, okay, what's going on with the offensive line? And football outsiders, they have Tampa Bay last year ranked as the 22nd, be, or 22nd in pass blocking with New England at fifth. So that could be a concern. Now, places like Pro Football Focus, they have a much higher opinion of Tampa Bay's pass blocking. So that's th- that's just something that we need to keep our eye on. Yeah, when you, when you look at a lot of those stats, I mean, it, it is very true that a quarterback makes an offensive line the same way that an offensive line makes a quarterback. Quarterbacks that hold on to the ball too much cause more sacks to happen, cause the ratings and grades to falter for offensive linemen. I think Brady is part of the reason why, not the entire reason, obviously, but part of the reason why New England – has had a good offensive line. Like they grade out high. Exactly. They grade out high sure. because Brady, he's going to get the ball. He's going to get it out of his hands extremely quickly. And and that's why I say it bodes well to uh, the guy in the slot taking the shorter routes in Godwin than it does for him holding the ball, waiting for a play to develop and airing it out to Mike Evans. I'm interested to see whose system is this? Is is Bruce Arians trying to get right. you know, look, he had he had Kurt Warner play, you know, his system and, and Carson Palmer play in his system and uh, you know, is Tom Brady gonna play in his system? Or is this going to be uh no, we're installing New England's offense. Tom Brady's going to be the guy, the way that Peyton Manning came in and took over and Adam Gase was just like, Yeah, you're you go be great and I will ride your coattails forever. Right. Um, so, and I don't think there's an answer that, to that. One thing that's interesting with OTAs being, uh, this is a little bit of news, OTAs being indefinitely suspended for these quarterbacks that are changing teams, you know, regardless of whose system, whether it's Brady's system or Arian's system, a lot of players have to learn something new and they're not going to have or possibly not going to have OTAs together, so that could really be a, a a drag on the beginning of the season, you know, fantasy output for Buccaneers, possibly for uh, the Colts. Although uh, Philip Rivers is at least going to a system that was with him in uh, back when it was San Diego. 
Now, before we get into Philip Rivers, want to thank today's sponsor, Omaha Steaks, America's original butcher. Right now, Omaha Steaks has an amazing limited time offer to help your family stock up and save big while doing it. OmahaSteaks.com. You enter the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, and you're going to get 68% off the Ultimate Grillers package. That's $186 value for just $59.99. Here is what you're going to pack your freezer with. Two butchers cut filet mignons trimmed twice to remove all exterior fat. Two bold and beefy top sirloins. Four premium pork chops. Four Omaha steak burgers. Four gourmet jumbo franks. Four potatoes au gratin. Four caramel apple tartlets. Omaha steak seasoning packet. Plus you're going to get four more burgers and four more franks for free. Omaha steaks are the most tender and most flavorful, and you can only get steaks of this quality from America's Original Butcher. You get this limited time stock up special and get the free burgers and franks for just $59.99. That's a savings of 68%. Go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar, and add the Ultimate Grillers package to your cart today. Jason, I am going to be making... Some burgers tonight, and they will be Omaha steak burgers. I, mean, I think there is a legitimate chance that I do identical to that. And now that you've spoken it, because I th- that was in the burger running bros. for dinner tonight. Where is what's bros. happening? Oh yeah. All right. Well, let's see if this guy could become your burger bro. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't really have happy thoughts about him last year. Philip Rivers. A one-year deal. He's going to the Indianapolis Colts. Jason, your reaction is... Why? Why? <laughs> is he that much better than yes. Jacoby Brissett? Yes, and stop it. It's so ridiculous. I don't think he's that much better than Jacoby Brissett at this stage. I'm not saying Phillip Rivers isn't an infinitely better quarterback than Jacoby Brissett, and at the end of their careers, they won't even be in the same breath. Of course not. But a 38-year-old Philip Rivers, who looked bad on film last year, threw picks like he was trying to compete with Jameis Winston, and now yes, he threw a lot over, of interceptions. And now coming over to a team where you forget Jacoby Brissett was off to a smoking hot start last year until injuries to both him and his wide receiving core kind of derailed it. Second half, Jacoby Brissett sucked, but the first he half was of the year, he off was... to a, a, a unsustainable touchdown pace. So sure, I, which is really good, though, right? Like, I, uh, like uh, yeah, I Lamar that, Jackson but... last year, unsustainable touchdown rate, also synonymous with good performance. But I'm saying, like, those things just happen. Like Nick Foles came into a situation and was awesome, like for a small stretch of time. Like guys can do that. Philip Rivers has a has Hall of Fame credentials. I mean, he probably won't get in, but if you just look at the longevity and his statistics, he is a Hall of Fame level quarterback. Last year, threw for over 4,600 yards. He had a 66 completion percentage. Meanwhile, Jacoby, under 3,000 yards, completing 61% of his passes. I mean, to me, this is a monstrous, a well, monstrous upgrade to the Colts offense, a monstrous upgrade to all fantasy options for this team. I will say this. My opinion of whether or not the Colts should have paid $25 million for Phillip Rivers, which is negative, um, <laughs> might be a little bit informed by the fact that I believe the fantasy implications for a lot of these offensive pieces go up. So, you know, maybe I'm a little bit less... I'm unbiased when it comes to the actual analysis of what's going to happen and more biased to just the opinion of do I like it or not because I don't I don't like Philip Rivers what he did to me and my team last year but when it comes to um so look at the pass catching back I'm curious how they might involve Marlon Mack but really Nine right. Hines you would project to be the more prototypical player to come into that Austin Eckler Danny Woodhead what? role yeah for that for that role but I don't think they're just going to you know like Frank Reich is not going to copy the no. system for the charges. I mean, he's going to put the personnel out that would it. I think now is the now we get to see can Marlon Mack really catch the ball and make things happen. Like yeah, he's, he's going to get targets. I mean, you this isn't about like installing some other system and trying to emulate teams of the past, but I think um look, we're going to talk to Awesome Eckler here in oh a little bit. Oh my goodness. Like I, it's, you started to forget, right? 
I honestly, I did. That this show is it's so weird. I'm in a room. I'm alone. I mean, not, not virtually because Jason's here. Our producers are here. It's just it's so weird. Austin Eckler's on the freaking show today. Yeah, and oh uh, my gosh, we, what am we, I? What am I doing? We, we talked to him, but he brings up a great uh, example. He, the way that he illustrates the difference in Philip Rivers passing to his running back versus, say, Tyrod Taylor, if that's who goes forward, is that Tyrod Taylor is mobile, can get out of issues on his own a little bit better, and that's when a Phillip little Rivers, bit better, a little, <laughs> just a little bit better than <laughs> Philip. Just like he can move a little better. Rivers has like a career twenty rushing yards. Yeah, he's. I agree with you, Mike. Uh, your words, not mine. He's the worst. But um, he's not. He's my, good. My, my point is is that awesome Eckler states that you know that's his safety valve is when things are are breaking down, he dumps it off. That's not a system thing necessarily so much as a he's not going to escape the pocket when things break down. He's going to get the ball out of his hands to his safety valve at running back. And I'm curious to see if Marlon Mack can inherit that role or if Naeem Hines kind of takes that over. But the point is that certainly, without a shadow, a shred of doubt, the pass catching to the running back position for the Colts will be greater than it was last year, and I think significantly so. It's It'll be our job as the season progresses to determine how that divvies up. And T.Y. Hilton... He gets a huge bump to me. Uh, Rivers went deep far more often and far more accurately than Jacoby Brissett. Like uh, this, I think this is a really big move. Yeah, it, for look, fantasy purposes, it's great for T.Y. Hilton. Probably good for Marlon Mack. Great for Naeem Hines. Um, I'm still not My man. Yet. Jack not. Baby Hands Doyle. Oh. Certainly. Or Gigantor, maybe. I know. I was like, well, Gigantor Alex, season? Please. Because, look, they need a tight end here. Like, they really, really, really need a tight end. And there isn't one on the free agent market to get. There's not one in the draft not, that's going they to They don't need one. They have. They have one. They have two and a half. That's my. Mo that's, Alley Cox counts as one and a half. I, but that's, that's the point I'm getting to. I believe they need one. There isn't one to get. So they're going to use who's on the roster. And. Maybe Mo Ali Cox can finally break through. It, it's hard for him to break into things because he's so big. You know, right. it's like if, 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 you, you can't he's break, break you can't down break a into large, something. Well, well, like if you break into a house and the whole house just shatters, did yeah, you break the, into the house? Or really. did you? you just, I think you just broke the house. You broke the. <laughs> and so that's what Mo Ali Cox has been doing, breaking the NFL fields because <laughs> he's so big. But I I agree with you, Jack Doyle. He has a massive bump up because. He is going to be the primary receiving tight end. It won't around the red zone, O'Alley Cox, but through the 20s and still in the red zone, I think Jack Doyle is, Eric Ebron is gone. This is great, great news for any Doyle owner in Dynasty and, and in redraft leagues, Doyle will be very relevant. I was going to say I'm not a huge believer in Paris Campbell yet. Yeah, uh, it remains wanna... to be seen, the the secondary wide receiver for this team, well, I I don't know. I liked Paris Campbell a lot coming out of college. So did the team. They spent a second round pick on him, but we didn't really get a chance to see him. Generally speaking, when you're talking about free agency, this would already be like we would be way over the limit of quarterback information, quarterback change, except we aren't close to done talking about the quarterbacks is unbelievable. The Carolina Panthers in a scenario that just went from Wait, what? No, there's no... Wait. Oh, oh, and it's done. They went from Cam Newton is our guy again to mm, we're going to let Cam Newton try and get traded, try and we're, seek a trade partner, and we're, we're going to let sign. him. We're yes. gonna let, we, we're, we're, we're allowing Let's. Cam Newton to seek a trade, and Cam Newton tweets out, what? Don't put those words out there. You're and forcing How did he do all the, the weird... Letters. I could like how long did that read, thing take? I could barely read his tweet. I don't know if he's got some <laughs> program where every letter he types looks funky, but yes, uh, his tweet. If you haven't seen it, it's it's basically in hieroglyphics, but also in English. So, but he he came out and he said, no, 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 don't don't say that this is like some amicable thing. He wanted to be a Panther. You're forcing him out, and then they go sign a three year, sixty three million dollar contract with Teddy Bridgewater. This does, this isn't fantasy, and I know Andy disagrees with me a little bit. I don't know where you stand. I think the Panthers freaking hosed Cam Newton. 
Yes. I'm not like some Cam Newton apologist or truther. Uh, you know, I've I've spoken poorly of him in the past. I've spoken well of him in the past. I thought he was going to be good for fantasy last year prior to the foot injury. But goodness gracious, he's what option does he have, especially with the Corona world where he can't get tested by teams, doctors, he can't go and easily prove that he's ready to go. You've got, uh, there's, and there's one job. There's one job left I allegedly. Mean, the, and that would be the, the Patriots because the chargers, at least they've come out and said the chargers are moving forward with Tyrod Taylor. They're not going to spend big money on a veteran quarterback. They'll add someone in the draft, but I'm, I'm with you. Like they, they, they absolutely hosed him. If you, like, you had to have known that you weren't going to move forward with Cam Newton a while ago. Just cut him, let him, or tra or try and trade him a couple months ago. Let let him figure out what the market is. Don't take this player who has been the face of your franchise for so long, and then r like right before or, or like halfway through the free agency process, say, "Oh yeah." You, you figure it out, Cam. Good luck. It, it was so greedy. They just wanted to get something in return, and when they've realized that they're not going to be able to do that because the doctors can't verify where he's at, now they're they moved on, and they're like, "I'm going to get Teddy Bridgewater." And tell me this: so like the Bears, the Bears should have got Cam Newton. They would have been phenomenal with Cam Newton. Sure, they couldn't trust it. If you're the Bears and you see the Panthers, who have access to how he is health, you know, physically. They go out and sign Teddy Bridgewater. What does that say about Cam Newton? That says, oh, they can't rely on him, so we can't rely on him. And then they go and trade for uh, Nick Foles. Right. And that's and that's another big piece, big potential piece. But hold on. Let, let's stay with the Panthers. Fantasy implications for, for the pieces. You know, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Christian McCaffrey. How are you feeling about those three guys? Anyone going up? Anyone going down? Uh, I I think it's uh, DJ Moore is on his own going up in general. I wouldn't say he's up much higher than he was prior to the trade because Teddy Bridgewater is a very safe, great manager. Um, but he's but, actually accurate. Kyle Allen was not good. Yes. Uh, so, but I think DJ Moore, where he was already trending, was already kind of a, a low end wide receiver one, high yeah, end agree. wide receiver two. So I just don't know that this move can bump him much higher than that to me. I, I think it can move. It moves his ceiling up for me because he, when you have to deal with bad quarterback play the whole year, but you're still overcoming, you're still being great. Get him an accurate quarterback, which Teddy Bridgewater is. Then, I mean, I'm I'm interested. It. It's uh, it's unfortunate for Curtis Samuel. Samuel was like the king of air yards last year, but the king of, uh, uh of unrealized air yards. And the, the way that Teddy plays of being safer a game manager, at least he was for for the Saints. We'll see if an entire off season. Well, <laughs> then again, does he get an entire off season in this crazy world we're living in? But theoretically, if if he had the whole off season. Does that change how he plays the game? And I don't think it really will. Yeah, I, I just don't know that I can bump DJ Moore up higher than he was already set to. But Curtis Samuel, on the other hand, he Well, was, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it's I've I got the arrow pointed down for Curtis Samuel. What? Really? Yeah. Oh, I see. I've this is interesting because I've got the arrow pointed up for Curtis Samuel. Because, like you said, the, the deep ball uh, targets were just atrocious. He he couldn't catch them. And while Teddy isn't really a, a push it downfield. Every quarterback in the NFL throws downfield from time to time. And when they do, if Curtis Samuel can catch the ball because it's just a catchable target, I think that goes up. And where his average draft is, he was pretty much left for dead after this season and now gets a relevant player. I mean, look at Michael Thomas, right? Michael Thomas was unbelievable this year. He had five games with Teddy Bridgewater. And if you look at the game splits between when he had Breeze and when he had Bridgewater, he had half a fantasy point more with Breeze. Uh, you know, average in PPR, 23 fantasy points without Breeze this year. So Teddy can get it done. I, I just don't think I could push DJ Moore above where he was, but Curtis Samuel, because he was so low, I, I think the, the arrow's up for him. The, we briefly mentioned it here. The Bears traded for Nick Foles. They gave a fourth-round pick. There was some contract restructuring. It 
surely seems like the Bears want Nick Foles to take the job away from Mitch Trubisky, or at the very least, it lets Trubisky know that you, if you're not committing 100% to this program, then you're going to be out. So, Jason, your takeaway, is Nick Foles the starter at the beginning of the year? Is he the starter a couple games in, halfway through the season? How are you projecting the situation? Yeah, I think this is still going to be Trubisky's team. They've said from the beginning they want to bring in a veteran to push him, to compete. Their best case scenario is that they wasted money on Foles. I've seen that said on Twitter um, by inside sources, and that's what they want, and they're going to put themselves in a place to at least have the chance to realize that. The good news is Nick Foles, while not a great starter, has some kind of weird magic where when he comes in as the backup and takes over right. for a starter, then he's great. <laughs> you know, He's a Super Bowl MVP type of great. So, yeah, go ahead and uh, start Trubisky, and then a couple games in, bring in the superstar backup. I can't imagine how much money Foles will get because he restructured his deal where he can opt out. So if he comes in and is great, he's going to be like, okay. Get, uh, get another get, starter he's deal? He's going to get another starter deal for massive money as the cap goes up. He's going to be the new Matt Flynn. And so just his goal is just sign a contract. But I love Nick Foles, the dude, so I'm 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 super happy for him. All right. I think we've exhausted the the actual quarterback news. Some smaller stuff. Marcus Mariota go went to the Raiders. He could end up pushing Derek Carr out of a job, and the Browns grabbed Case Keenum as their backup. Moving on to the running back position, the Dolphins signed Melvin Gordon. Oh, no, they did not. They showed interest, but they went with Jordan Howard. I haven't heard. I know now is when I'm supposed to talk about Jordan Howard, but I haven't yes. heard but now I piqued your interest. You yes, because where is the interest for Melvin I Gordon? I don't. I keep messaging our Slack saying, "Has There's anybody rumors, heard Melvin uh, Gordon news?" There are rumors about everyone, high level, low level, mid level. It doesn't matter. Everyone has news, except him. <laughs> it's just like crickets. There yeah. is no. It seems like there's no market for Melvin Gordon. But yes, Jordan Howard signs with the Dolphins. Look, I said this before this signing, and I believe it now. He will outproduce his average draft position. Jordan Howard is not a guy people enjoy liking. They want to disparage him. They want to play the tuba sound effect and be like, oh, yeah. he's this non-pass catching, trod down the field. And now he goes to the Dolphins, which ensures his draft stock is not going to be high. Who wants the running game for the Dolphins? Not me. Not me. But the point is, where he's going to fall to is, he, look, he's been good. I mean, Jordan Howard is good. I, he, I yes. believe that. Yes, Jordan Howard is a good running back, but his situation, I mean, this is grim. You're on the Dolphins. I mean, I, I, who, who knows? Line. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, the, the reason why he was, he, he was becoming valuable last year because he was turned into this touchdown machine. He was getting all the touchdowns for the Philadelphia Eagles. Ryan Fitzpatrick can run an offense. So I don't know. Maybe Jordan Howard has some touchdown upside at the beginning of the year. I've, I'm just trying to spin it. Do you know how old Jordan Howard is? Not old. I would guess 26. Yeah. He's 25 right now. All right. I, th I think he might be 26 when the season enters, but it feels like he's 32. He's just been out, you know, having sure. thousand yard seasons for, you know, the last better half of the decade. So, and teams don't want him. And teams don't want him. He's not a great pass catcher. That's been proven. That's not like opinion. That's, yeah, that's science now. That's science. That he is just not that good at that. So, you know, it's going to drive his fantasy stock down as well. But I think, look, at, at certain times last year, people were picking up and playing uh, Laird and Balazs <laughs> and, you know, Jordan Howard I do is, remember Patrick Laird's season. That was fun. Yeah. So if Patrick Laird can do a little bit of fantasy relevant work. Jordan Howard certainly can, and sure. he'll be late in drafts. He'll be yep. a guy where you can have as your bench running back where you're not talking about, Oh, would you accept him as your RB two? I think you're going to have him possibly as your RB four because nobody's going to want him. And I'll, I'll take him all day there because depth matters in fantasy. NBC sports reported that Jarek, McKinnon oh my goodness agreed to restructure his contract with the 49ers the 49ers placed a second round tender 
on Matt Burita. So if you don't remember, Derek McKinnon originally signed <laughs> with the 49ers in 1992. He has not yet played a single game for them in real season, but he is still a 49ers. This is unbelievable. I mean, it's just it's so surprising. I, here's what here's why we bring this up. I hope you had fun with Raheem Mostert last year. <laughs> because this team had three running backs last year. And if they're keeping McKinnon. Because, I mean, he restructured. That doesn't guarantee him a spot on this team. But if they are, if they have four uh, running backs. He, he's a running back, so I'm pretty sure he's guaranteed a spot. I mean, with, they're going to. With the 49ers? Four is not all? enough. Four is not enough. My name is Jeff. Is going to be back. Uh, is he? What? Hold on. No. Jeff oh. Wilson is back? Uh, he, uh, he will be by the time oh. the season rolls around. They're, <laughs> they're looking for 16 or 17 running backs. Uh, led by my guy Kyle Uzcheck, who is awesome. He'll be out there. Uh, uh, here's here's the truth. Every single game, someone is very fantasy relevant for the San Francisco 49ers run game behind Kyle Shanahan. It's going to be a great role. Jerick McKinnon will uh, probably be undrafted, but could be relevant. Probably. Uh, it's just a crazy piece of news, really. It's it's too early to tell uh, how that running back core is going to shake down, but it, it is. it's just funny. Because it's like people don't even remember he's there. Oh, yeah. So it, it, Brooks is letting us know that Jeff Wilson was, in fact, re-signed. <laughs> That's right. March. This I've was seen a that in March weeks ago. Just a couple weeks ago. They're like, I yeah, forgot let's forgot all about oh Bring them all in. Uh, I don't know. If all they, right. Maybe they don't know Melvin Gordon's out there. Oh, don't tell them, please. All right. Moving on to wide receivers. We already exhausted the Stephon Diggs trade while we were uh, between shows. The Cowboys figured it out. They got Amari Cooper under contract. Five years, $100 million. Good for you, Cowboys. This was the move that you had to make. It, and now you got to figure things out with Dak, of course, who is currently on the franchise. He, but, turned, he turned down more money from uh, the you're Redskins. You're talking about Amari Cooper right now. Yes, Amari Cooper was offered more money uh, to go to the Washington Redskins and division. He turned it down. He wants to be part of this franchise, and I think it's good. I know you and I disagree, right? Amari Cooper has every single year of his career been great at the end on paper and great sure. for I don't 50% argue with that. and great for 50% of his games, but he's been atrocious for fantasy. He has let fantasy players down because his consistency is exactly what we try to avoid. 50% of the time he's great, 50% of the time he's bad. Last year looked like that was not going to be the case. Turned out to be the case because he was great in the beginning and terrible in the end. I believe it was injury as the reason that he was terrible in the end. I think his consistency in the beginning, I will be in on Amari Cooper this year. You will be out on Amari Cooper as if it was me with Philip Rivers. I, yeah, I like to hate. I like to pretend to hate Amari Cooper. Uh, he's, he is good. It's, it's great that he's back with the Cowboys. A couple house cleaning the uh, notes here the Bengals franchised aj green as was going to be expected the houston texans they found their replacement oh yeah for deandre hopkins they signed randall cobb to a three-year 27 million dollar contract they you you want to talk okay san francisco has all the running backs houston has all the slot wide receivers <laughs> like oh my goodness what are they what are they doing here's the difference San Francisco's great Unless, with their I'm running like, backs. They're they're banking on our man. Money, 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 oh, money, money, yeah. yeah, Kenny Bills, y'all. Kenny Bills season. Hopefully, the oh Packers, yeah, uh, my dynasty team would be very happy. Kenny Bills <laughs> season. Let's get that done. Now, my dynasty team would be very happy if it were Alan Lazard season because the Packers brought him back on a one year deal. The Jags put a second round tender on Keelan Cole. What? what? That, yeah, that was really what surprising. They, what? Okay. Uh, okay. You All really right. need, you really needed Keelan Cole. And in tight end news, we were wrong about well, we were, I was we wrong right. about Jimmy Graham. I remember you saying he's gonna sign, and he signed immediately. I said he would sign because there are poorly run franchises out there who would stupidly make a uh, sign Jimmy Graham and then the Bears. So the team holding that bag, the Chicago Bears brought him in on a two-year deal. And the crazy thing to me is usually okay. usually bad franchises start at the top, like 
ownership. But the Bears are a storied franchise. They're a great franchise. But I don't know, man. It's like you you win GM of the year, and all of a sudden you think you can do no wrong. And since that time, I feel like the Bears GM has uh, just constantly been making head scratchers. Well, because they want to compete. San Francisco's got the running backs. Chicago has the tight ends. I'm looking at our lads right now, and we have uh, 10 tight ends on the roster. <laughs> Oh, that's because nobody stays healthy. What is happening? And this doesn't even have Jimmy Graham on it yet. Well, the great thing is they've had a real issue with injuries at the tight end position. So they go out and sign Jimmy Graham. Yeah, that that's the move. The Seahawks put a second round tender on Jacob Hollister, a.k.a. Abercrombie. So we're going to have a log jam at tight end up in Seattle. And the Raiders signed Jason Witten for some reason. I think this when was they- just a Monday Night Football connection. They wanted to bring Jason Witten and Gruden together because just imagine the the hype speeches that they can give. Uh, I don't know if sure. Booger is too far removed from his playing days, but rumors are maybe he'll sign. Uh, fair enough. All right. The episode's going to run a little bit long today, but you know what? I don't think that matters right now. People need content. People need stuff to listen to. So listen to my interview with Awesome Eckler. You talking to me. The fantasy footballers are extremely excited to bring in one of our favorite players for an interview here, Austin Eckler. My friend, congratulations on the new contract. I mean, what you have accomplished from undrafted to this level of success. How how are you feeling about securing the bag, my friend? Hey, first off, I just want to start off by saying thank you for having me on. I appreciate you guys' time. But, of course. Uh, no, the feeling, man, the feeling's amazing. Uh, you know, just like you said, uh, for going from undrafted to finally, you know, it coming my time of, of contract year and actually being able to secure a contract with the team that I started with is an amazing feeling. Just personally and just, you know, knowing the connection with me and the Chargers is strong. At what point throughout the year, or it, maybe it was, was in the off season, at what point did you start to feel confident that a, a new deal was going to get done? <laughs> um, not necessarily through the year. It was uh, after the year. You know, I had a, had a pretty good year as far as uh, what I was given for my workload. And, you know, it came up to the, to the point where it's, okay, this is my contract year. And it's like, look, they can tender me which is usually the option that teams go or, you know, if they like me enough, you know, we can have some negotiation. So uh, when we first started out, you know, talking about just as far as my role on the team, we were kind of in a different mindset, but ended up chiseling down uh, to an agreement. So at the beginning of our negotiation, as far as a long-term deal, we were really far apart. So I figured, yeah, I'd probably just get the tender. Uh, but then, like I said, we ended up coming to an agreement just as far as like what type of player I am. Cause it's kind of different. If you look at me, you know, I've been a backup for, you know, on paper, I've been a backup for like three years, but to me, I've never really felt like a backup. I felt like I always had a position or a role on the team that was, and I was able to, you know, influence the, the outcome of games through that role. It wasn't just, Oh, I'm a special teams guy. And so, you know, I don't have a potential to have a, a decent sized contract. And so we kind of got on the same page as far as like putting like an offensive weapon tag on me. It's like, that's what you are. It's like, you're not necessarily the starting running back who's going to take, you know, 40, 30 or uh, 20, 30 carries a game. But, you know, you might get some carries here, some receiving yards here. So uh, I'm just glad we were able to, you know, finally chill down to what we thought I was, and you know, put it into paper and get them agreed on. Have they given you any, uh, you know, implications, any commitments to what the backfield is is going to look like this year? Like, are they uh, kind of going to split with you and Justin Jackson? Or what What we are all hoping for is seeing you as the featured guy. Have they kind of given you any any indication what the plan is? Uh, no, we haven't had any talks as far as the future of uh, the backfield for the Chargers yet, but it seems that Melvin's probably not going to be coming back. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, it's Justin and me right now in the room as far as you know, guys that have consistently played, and so it might be looking to draft somebody or just use us and sign somebody, who knows. 
But as far as right now, I mean, I know I'm going to be there. <laughs> so sure. I'll have to be doing my thing either way. Now, were your the, the feats of strength that you're always posting on Twitter, was this your way of creating extra leverage against the team? <laughs> uh, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I way. knew it. Because <laughs> you're doing some That's really right. freaking impressive stuff, man. Right. They look at that and they're like, man, we got to have this guy. Like, we can't <laughs> let this guy go. <laughs> <laughs> uh so with with the changes for the teams the big one is going to be the quarterback change it, it seems that yeah that the team will be parting ways with philip rivers and right now i mean at least a few weeks ago coach lynn was saying he has no problem starting with tyrod taylor as your guys uh as the quarterback for the team how much time have you really gotten to work with tyrod and kind of get that it could the you know the chemistry that you and rivers have had for years uh it's definitely gonna be different you know especially coming in with philip because when you come into philip's you know team is he just has control of the offense you know he's making changes on the fly you know he's lining you up in different spots and he's just very very i don't know just fluid with it i guess you would say and he makes it work because he understands everything so that was his offense and really tyrod had to kind of take a back seat uh, because of that, as far as like, you know, the leadership in the actual like offensive room. And so I feel like it'll be different. I feel like we'll see more of Tyrod and his personality and his leadership if he is the guy. And, you know, I'm looking forward to working with him because I know he is super athletic and, you know, I've seen his athletic ability. So, you know, I'd have confidence in him being our quarterback. But now it's just, yeah, creating that chemistry because, <clears throat> you know, Philip has been there for so long. So, and my career has all been with Phillip, and so it'll be my first time playing with a new quarterback. So it'll be interesting to you know see how we mesh and, and grow. And how do we convince Tyrod, if he's the guy, how do we convince him that you need more receptions than Christian McCaffrey? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I don't know about that. It was just a race. Who can have more yards? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so see, that'll we, be different. It'll be different because with, with, with Phillip, you know, he's not as mobile, so you check it down a lot. Tyrock can run a little bit, so it's definitely going to take some convincing to just say, hey, I'm open over here, too. You can throw me the ball. <laughs> so our our focus, we're a fantasy football show. So I've, I got to ask, are how how much do you know about fantasy football? Have you ever played? Or do you just do you distance yourself? What do you know about the game? Uh, I used to play back in high school, but ever since then, I haven't really played. I keep up with it now and then, just as far as you know, people hit me up and tell me that I was terrible this week and they hate me, or that they love me this week and I was pretty good. So you know, I, I don't necessarily keep it up on it, but other people keep me up to date for it. <laughs> I was going to say, what was your social media like those first four or five weeks? Oh, yeah. The first part, I, actually, this entire season, people were, you know, mostly giving me good comments. It was, uh, I remember my first year and second year, it was, it was a little mixed. But last year was pretty solid. I feel like I did a pretty good job for all the fantasy owners out there. Now, one of my best fantasy calls, I guess I got a little toot toot here, but before the season started, and with kind of the alt- the tumult that was going on with the, the team and Melvin, I had predicted mm-hmm. that you were going to be a top 12 fantasy running back at the end of the year. So you came through hey. in a big way and made me hey. look really good. <laughs> that's, that's quite the prediction you got there, man. Nice job, for sure. Because she along- gave me for cheap, too. Yes. That, hey. Look, hey, hey. man, it was, it was fantastic. And along the way, our listeners dubbed you Awesome Eckler. So we're wondering, do you have an official <laughs> nickname, or are you are you good with us rolling with Awesome Eckler? Awesome. I don't know if I'll call myself Awesome Eckler. I might get a couple looks, but uh, no, that's fine. If y'all want to call me that on your little face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and uh, we'll get you out of here on this one. Uh, I got to talk about your celebration. I'm a guitar player, so your air guitar celebration is absolutely one of my favorites, and I was curious about what's the origin story. Did it just come out when you scored a touchdown, or what's the background there? So there's a lot of like different backgrounds I talk about, but the main thing is I just love like listening to rock music when I'm like working out and things like that, like hardcore rock. And so it's just the feeling that when you score a touchdown, like, it's pretty dang hard to score a touchdown in the NFL. But when it's scored and everyone's going crazy, you're cheering and booing, 
it's just that feeling. I feel like that I would be a rock star, you know, it's like, I feel like that's what the whole concert feels like for a rock star. Everyone's just going nuts and you just out there just jamming the guitar. So I'm out there just strumming it, just rocking out. Now, I'm not sure if you know, but Dante Moncrief, his celebration was actually slapping the bass. And I'm wondering if you guys have considered forming like an <laughs> air band. We tried to at one time, but the coordination <laughs> was too bad. So we, we discontinued that. <laughs> So it's going to take a little bit more coordination, but you know, hopefully, you know, during the off season, we can get something worked out. Uh, it would be fantastic. Thank you, Austin, for all of your time. Uh, fantasy football players, they finally know the truth of how great you are as an offensive weapon, as a running back in the NFL. So thank you so much for your time, man. And we're, we're looking forward to next year, what you can do. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. And uh, all you fantasy fans, make sure you pick me up. It's going to be a big one. That's what I'm talking about. Thanks, dude. Big shout out to Austin Eckler. Congratulations again on the contract. He was a delightful human being to talk to. Jason, do you have any parting words for the show? <sighs> Look, this is a Magala agency. Okay. It's a long free agency show. <laughs> Wait, what? It, did you it, just try and, and use our Megala brand yeah. and put it onto free agency? I did, and it works on paper. If, if it did not work it out, out loud, if you though. Type, well, I realized that. But if you type it out, oh, man, it works. And that's <laughs> that gave me confidence to go with Megala agency. But it don't work. It don't work. No, so, it's, no. it's terrible. <laughs> but just write it down and then apologize because you'd be like, I get it. I see what you did. It was pretty great. And then ignore me ever saying it with my words in my mouth. Uh, no, the free agency is going to continue. Uh, NFL draft season right around the corner. It's continuing on schedule. I'm there are still excited. so many interesting free agents available that we didn't even get to talk about. Like so hopefully Melvin Gordon. <laughs> Robbie Anderson. I mean, like. There are there's some interesting guys that are still out there. I'm sure we'll talk about them next time. Quick shout out, Pristine Auction. A Josh Allen jersey yeah! signed oh, by excellent. the Stallion himself. 76 bucks. Someone won that on pristineauction.com. If you're gonna go there, check it out. Make a new account. Register with the code Ballers. You're gonna get ten dollars off your first purchase. That's gonna do it for the show. I'm your host, Mike the Fantasy Him and Right. He is Jason Moore. Stay safe, everybody. Find something to do. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.